this is the course web page. And if you scroll down, you find the schedule. And right now here we are at intro. So I open that. So, hi, welcome to Python for Scientific Computing. So we've already introduced ourselves in the uh, in the little icebreaker session. So let's go right past that. Maybe we can talk about our organization some. So Jarno and I work at Aalto University in Finland. And Diana, who, what, where do you work right now? Uh, I'm working at uh, Uppsala University. Yeah. In okay. Sweden. Yes. And as you may have noticed from the web page, there's a lot of different partners here. So we have instructors from Finland, Norway, and Sweden, at least. And people all around have been advertising the course. So the basic course contents. So Day one starts off with some basic tools. So if you've used Python for science a little bit, you probably know these, but we have to cover them to make sure everyone's on the same page and has a good foundation. Um, on day two, it's still fairly basic, but we start going to more interesting things, such as the visualization and data formats. And then days three and four gets to even more specialized tools, which unless you've done a lot of stuff. This is probably still, um, this is probably new to you. And we can adjust the schedule as needed. So what you see on the website might be adjusted some. Also on the last day, we have this panel discussion. And in the panel discussion, we have all the instructors together and you can ask us any questions. And that's usually a lot of fun. Okay, so how to attend. So obviously you figured out that this is a live stream. So you're watching on Twitch, you're free to share the link to anyone you may want in the world. That's completely fine and intended. But there can be different pathways beyond that. So some people will pay close attention, do all the exercises, try to learn everything. Other people may watch, you may follow along with some of the examples and solutions, but you might be a little bit less active. Some people might be watching passively, seeing what's there, and then come back later whenever it becomes more relevant to you. These are all okay ways of attending. And we support them all. Practicalities. So live streaming is different. So whenever we would do these workshops in person, we might have a few tens of people there. Right now, according to my Twitch description, there's 209 people following us, and there are more than 400 people registered. So how does this work? So we're like a TV production, something like that. Anyone can watch. There's pauses for exercises, like consider it like commercial breaks or something like that. And we will say, OK, now it's time for an exercise. We mute the stream. Us instructors come and plan what to do next in the background. And then you have time to work on things. We keep watching the notes and um, let's see. So we watch the notes, we answer questions there during the exercises and we come back and based on what the questions were and what people are interested in, we can go over the exercises and the solutions or go straight on. Um, in some places there may be other in-person or online meetings where people are working together. For example, you might some people might be with their friends in a conference room. You're watching together, and during the breaks, you're working there. This is also completely fine, and actually, we'd recommend it. So some years, we've organized these Zoom sessions ourselves, but this time, it's all on our partners to organize those. Within the workshop, we have different parts. So we have the part where we're talking, the live stream. We have type along where we're typing and you can try to type along with us. There's exercises. So this is where you do your own thing. And then we have breaks. So at least 10 minutes per hour, sometime between the 50 and the 10 of the hour. Chat and communication. So 
some of us are watching the Twitch chat, but it's not where you recommend the questions go because we can't follow it. Instead, we recommend that you answer, you ask an answer in the notes document, which you get if you register. It's the benefit for registering. Um, so like this, so this is from a different course, but you see there's sections, there's things, people ask questions in bullet points and answer in other bullet points. And we have people that are always watching this, so you'll usually get an answer very quickly. Um, always write at the very bottom because that's the only part we're actively monitoring. Every so often we copy all the old questions away and put them in an archive notes document and that's findable from the top. You can also use this to figure out where we are in the lesson. We like update the sections, stuff like that. Um, yeah, here's the way you switch between view and edit modes and so on. Um, yeah, so one thing to, or two things to be aware of. So there's going to be a lot of stuff written here, so don't get overloaded. So the point is that you can come back and follow this later. So during the course, I'd recommend if you're bored, look at it. If you're actively focusing on what we're saying, focus on that and leave the notes alone. And also, please never include any identifiers or names or things in the notes because it's archived and anyone may see it. So from the, well, from the course website, you can find these forever. They're not going away. So if you haven't done it yet, please open the notes and answer the icebreaker there. We've already been doing that some, but now really do it. Okay, screen arrangement. So you may notice we're broadcasting in this weird little vertical arrangement. There's a very specific reason for this. So you can arrange the screen like this, where Twitch with the vertical arrangement is taking half and the other half is for you. So you can have the lesson and notes in the web browser, your workspace where you're doing work. I guess in this case, your workspace might be a Jupyter, uh, Jupyter lab or something like that, whatever the case. And yes, and we found this works pretty well, even for small screens. Okay, I've already talked a little bit about this, but just to emphasize, so we recommend first you focus on the screen share and lecture when we're talking. And that's your first priority. Then is your own type of longer exercises. And then only after that, you focus on the notes, the your own exercise group if you have one, and the lesson web page. And we have plenty of breaks where you can follow up and catch up later. And I mean, everything we say is written down somewhere. so you're not really losing information. So this year we don't have the Zoom, but we will explicitly tell you when you go to exercises and when you come back to the main lecture. So if you're trying to work like that, you don't have any worries. So what can go wrong? Or should I say will go wrong? So some of these variation will always be, will happen in every one of our courses. So for some people, the lecture lessons are too simple. So it's okay, the later lessons will become interesting. You're in your home or office or wherever, so just do something else and listen passively. The lessons are too advanced. Well, you can keep watching passively and learn and come back later. All our materials open and will stay open forever. Um, if the instructors make a mistake, well, actually that's by design. So. You'll learn by seeing when things don't work and how we debug it. If the notes stop responding. So we, if we have 200 people editing this document at the same time, it might get a little bit slow. So in that case, people will um, wait a little bit and hopefully it will pass. And we also keep, try to keep it short to avoid this by moving to the archive notes. And you can find that link at the top if the stream dies. So if the computer I'm on, well, if one of them dies, then all the broadcasting gets lost. And in that case, well, you'll get a message from Twitch. So just wait around some, 
I'll restart everything and we'll get back as soon as we can. It's happened only very rarely, but be aware. The internet dies. Actually, during one of our courses, the Fastly CDN had a problem and then people couldn't rejoin the stream. And that was lots of fun. But in that case, just wait around and we'll be back eventually. Oh wait, this isn't a problem. So if I was at home, which hopefully I will be, my cat might come and visit us. And that's always one of the joys of the workshop. So hang around and maybe you get to see us get distracted that way. Okay, videos. So yes, it is recorded. Twitch saves them for seven days directly there, the raw video. And usually on YouTube by the same night, we have them processed and released. And if you want to follow this process or help us, please get in touch. Okay, we should be respectful and helpful to everyone. Um, so here's four main pieces of advice, and you probably heard more later, but be aware everyone here is at different levels and that's just expected. So people focus on different things, passive learning is okay. So be kind to each other. Everyone is both a teacher and a learner even us. So I think all of us, when preparing for this course, we've learned a little, a few new things about the different stuff we're teaching. Um, and as a learner yourself, you're a teacher to other people you're interacting with. So yes, keep this in mind. Okay, take the time to check in. So ask the other people you're with and we'll be asking you, how's it going? So are you able to follow? Do you need us to go faster or slower? And then finally, when something isn't right, let us know immediately. So the classic case here is that the sound is too slow or too, too low, or you can't see the screen, or I've forgotten to adjust the broadcast to include what's needed. Write in the notes or Twitch chat or somewhere immediately, and we'll see. Even if you think it's only a minor inconvenience, like our audio isn't balanced. Okay, final notes. So, um, we have information on credits on the web page. You can read it there as much as you want. Um, you can keep in touch with us these ways. We're always happy to have new people taking part, especially if you would like to co-teach or become a partner in this workshop later. So basically advertise and run own workshop sessions. Um, oh, this date is not out of date, but we have other workshops which are going on. And we recommend you sign up for the Code Refinery newsletter to get those announcements. And Code Refinery, the newsletter is findable from here. Okay, that's.